Purchase marks the end of the consumer journey, but marketers are often left wondering, how exactly did they get there? Illumin is demystifying the consumer journey through full funnel advertising automation, making it easy to target, engage, and convert online audiences like never before. Our intuitive drag and drop interface lets you create your custom consumer journey allowing you to select audiences and ads for each stage and control the conditions upon which a user moves through. Our machine science values each consumer, matching them with the best communication path and dynamically inserts them into the most appropriate stage of the journey. Ultimately, shrinking the path to action and providing greater efficiency, the connected omni-channel journey means that you can test the impact that different ad creatives, messaging, and sequencing have on conversion. Our proprietary Pathlight report then shines a light on the most effective and cost-efficient route. Optimizing campaign performance. Not only will you have crystal clear insight into how your consumers arrived at their final destination, but you'll get them there using the least amount of marketing dollars. Learn how Illumin is transforming digital advertising and how you can get the most from your advertising spend. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Acuity at second quarter 2021 financial results conference call for three and six month period and the June 30th, 2021. Before we begin the official remarks, I will read the cautionary note regarding forward looking information. Certain information to be discussed during this call contains forward-looking statements within the meaning of applicable security laws, including, among others, statements concerning the company's 2021 objectives, the company's strategy to achieve those objectives, as well as statements with respect to management's beliefs, plans, estimates, and intentions, and similar statements concerning anticipated future events, results, circumstances, performance, or expectations that are not historical facts. Such forward-looking statements reflect management's current beliefs and are based on information currently available to management and is subject to a number of significant risks and uncertainties 
that could cause actual results to differ materially from those anticipated. Please refer to the cautionary statements and the risk factors identified in our filings with CDAR for a more detailed explanation of the inherent risks and uncertainties that could affect such forward-looking statements. Following the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session. I would now like to turn the conference call over to Tal Hayek, the co-founder and chief executive officer of Acuity Ads to update you on the operations of the business. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Q2 investor presentation. My name is Tal Hayek, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Acuity Ads. This is the first presentation since we IPO'd on the NASDAQ recently, so I would like to send a warm welcome to all our new shareholders from all over the world. Over the past few quarters, we talked a lot about Illumin, and we talked about a, a lot about how Illumin is changing the world. Well, Q2 was all about execution. Our team did a tremendous job in getting more and more brands to adopt the Lumen and to benefit from being able to control the consumer journey and to send the right message at the right time to their consumer, depending where they are on that journey. I'd like to send a special thank you for the Acuity family for delivering such an amazing Q2, a quarter of overall growth of 55%, a quarter of 75% constant currency growth, and a quarter of 60% sequential growth on Illumin. And let's not forget a quarter of 154% growth in EBITDA. Companies, great companies like New York Life, Sparkling Eyes, Whataburger, and Dell, and many others, has already began taking advantage of Illumin and the consumer journey approach. And not only that they're getting a better success on their campaign, they're also learning a lot because the kind of insight that they're seeing from it is absolutely second to none. We're so excited about Q2 results. Revenue was up by 55% year over year, which is tremendous growth by itself. But on a constant currency basis, we were up 75%. Now, constant currency basis are really the right indicators from a growth perspective. Why? Because most of our revenue is derived in US dollars and the strong Canadian dollar understates our real true growth rate. So we were able to deliver $30.3 million in Q2. LTM, adjusted EBITDA. Let's talk about that for a second because this is something that we have been focusing a lot as a management team in the last few quarters. We made a decision that it's time to bring more profit from the organization. And as you can see, we were able to execute over the last eight quarters consistently, moving it up and to the right and delivering more LTM EBITDA. We are now reported $21.8 million LTM EBITDA for the quarter. CTV grew by 400% year over year basis. Tremendous excitement about the future of CTV, a great driver for the industry in general and for Acuity. And we're really, really excited to see that everything we talked about in the past regarding CTV is becoming reality. And advertisers are moving more and more from traditional TV uh, to uh, connected TV. Let's talk about Illumin, which is my favorite subject. From a revenue perspective, we saw an over 60% growth from Q1 to Q2. That is tremendous growth, and we delivered $5.2 million in revenue. Clients, at the end of Q2, we saw 40 clients, and 17 of them are Tier 1. And just to compare it, at the end of Q1, we had 17 clients, and 9 of them were Tier 1. So we grew the client uh, by 135%. Again, tremendous growth as it shows that our team is getting more and more of the brands adopted uh, into Illumin. And the majority of revenue in Illumin came from brand new business to Acuity. So we're very excited to see more and more logos coming, brand new logos coming into Acuity. And look, they're coming in because of Illumin and we love it. I think most importantly, when you look at in the future, and you look at what we predict to Illumin in the future, I can tell you we're very excited about it. Everybody in the company, from the sales team, from the execution team, to the tech team, marketing team, everyone is excited about Illumin. It gave really an amazing new life to the spirit of Acuity, because we have something unique and differentiated 
and that really puts us uh, uh, aside and lets us excel in this uh, world of programmatic advertising. So what we're seeing is amazing amount of RFPs, lots of demos, lots of demo requests, lots of great conversations with major brands out there. And I'm happy to say that the, the pipeline is an all time high for the second part of the year. So we do believe the best is yet to come when it comes to Illumin. And now we have a few quarters under us, actually three quarters uh, with Illumin. I'm happy to show this graph. So in Q4, when we launched Illumin, we did $1.5 million in Q1, 3.2 million. And in Q2, $45.2 million. It's only three quarters in, and we're very excited about where this is going to take us. A lot of, a lot of investors are always asking us, well, what makes you think that somebody else is not going to copy you. Well, I can tell you that I do feel that eventually somebody will copy the process because it just makes sense to do it. But we have such a tremendous advantage over the marketplace that it's gonna be very, very hard for them to catch up. And I do believe we have a lot of time ahead of us before we see anybody catch up. And don't forget that we're advancing all the time. In our latest uh, release of Illumin, um, we've created a better uh, journey uh, a better journey insights and new insight and access to more inventory. So this is just as been in the latest release and we have new releases coming in on regular basis. We're also running campaigns on regular basis. And every time we run a campaign, we learn from it. When we learn from it, product makes changes and improves the product as well. And needless to say also the types of integrations that we're doing out there is creating a better uh, product as well. And I think above all is the acuity algorithm that we developed in house all over the 11 the past 11 years is what makes all the decision in the background of Illumin and that cannot be duplicated well we're excited to share with you some data from actually what's happening when you run a campaign on Illumin as many of you know purple has been a great partner for many years with us they are all about driving value and they're all about ROI and they were nice enough to do a test with us and what did we do? We took a campaign and we ran part of it as a complete connected journey and the other part as a conversion only, which conversion only what we call the bottom of the funnel. It's more like what other DSPs do, like the old DSP of Acuity used to do. And the fully connected journey is when you divide the campaign into awareness stage, engagement stage and conversion stage, and you send different messages along the way, which is what Illumin is all about. I'm very happy to report that after running both campaigns, we were able to deliver much better value on the fully connected journey. And Josh Park, the director of performance marketing at Purple was nice enough to share his testimonial here. So as you can see, he's really excited about the, the result he's seeing. I will now ask Jonathan Pollack, our CFO, to share some financial updates. Thank you, Tal. Thinking back to where we were this time last year, right in the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic. And seeing where we are today is truly astonishing to me. I'm so proud of what the Acuity team has accomplished over this relatively short time period. Our year-over-year -year growth reflects not only the incredible bounce back of our organization from the difficult challenges of last year, it also shows the resilience of the advertising industry as a whole, and we are thrilled to be one of the leaders in this movement. In addition to our results, we are also very pleased that we successfully listed on the NASDAQ exchange after raising 57.5 million US dollars, receiving incredible support from both our existing investors as well as an entirely new base of US investors. Complementing this, we are continuing to see rapid adoption of our Lumen platform, which has become a strong catalyst for our future growth with revenue and pipeline growth well beyond our internal expectations. This growth is being driven by substantial inbound inquiries for the platform, some of which are from the largest advertising agencies and brands globally. We are ecstatic about the market opportunity that we are addressing with this innovative solution and believe this current momentum is truly just the beginning of this platform's full potential. With that in mind, I'd like to discuss the financial results from our second quarter 2021. Total revenue in the second quarter increased 55% year over year to 30.3 million compared to 19.6 million last year. 
With approximately 75% of our revenue derived in the U.S., the strong Canadian dollar understates our true growth. On a constant currency basis, revenue increased close to 75% compared to last year. In addition, revenue from Illumin this quarter totaled 5.2 million, an increase of 60% plus sequentially compared to 3.2 million in Q1 2021. Gross profit or net revenue was 15.8 million in Q2 2021, a 56.4% increase compared to 10.1 million in Q2 2020. Our gross profit margin in Q2 2021 was 52.2% compared to 51.7% in Q2 of last year. Total operating expenses for the second quarter totaled 13.3 million compared to 10.6 million last year, an increase of 25.5%. Q2 2020 expenses were obviously lower due to COVID related reductions realized last year, including the shutdown in all travel and entertainment expenses as well as the government wage support received during the 2020 period that was non-recurring this year. Operating expenses as a percent of revenue was 43.9% for the second quarter, down from 54.1% for the same period last year. This improved operating leverage led to an adjusted EBITDA increase of 154% in Q2 2021 to 5.4 million, up from 2.1 million in Q2 2020. And lastly, net income for the same period was 3.4 million, up from a net loss of 1.6 million last year. Turning to our first half results on the next slide, total revenue for the six months of 2021 was 57.7 million, a 32% increase compared to 43.8 million in 2020. Revenue from Illumin for the first half of 2021 totaled $8.4 million. In addition, gross profit or net revenue was 30.2 million in the first half of 2021, an increase of 35.4% compared to 22.3 million for the same period last year. Gross margin for the first half of 2021 was 52.3% compared to 50.9% for the same period last year. Total operating expenses for the six months of 2021 totaled 25.4 million, up from 23.4 million during the same period in 2020, an increase of 8.7%. Adjusted EBITDA in the first half of 2021 was 10 million, up 153% from 3.9 million during the comparable period in 2020. And net income in the first six months of 2021 totaled 4.7 million, compared to a net loss of 1.4 million for the same period last year. Turning to our balance sheet, our working capital position continues to grow due to cash generated from the business, as well as our recent financing completed simultaneously with our NASDAQ listing. As of June 30th, our working capital position totaled 100.1 million, putting us in a very strong financial position. And as you'll see on the next slide, as of June 30th, 2021, our cash balance stood at $93.4 million. In addition, on an LTM basis, in line with our growth strategy, we continue to generate strong adjusted EBITDA. As you can see here, our LTM adjusted EBITDA continues to grow, reflecting the strong operational leverage we continue to generate each quarter. I am incredibly pleased to announce that as of June 30th, 2021, our LTM adjusted EBITDA stood at $21.8 million, an increase of close to 90% over the same period last year. Lastly, given our recent capital raise, we wanted to provide an update on primary and fully diluted shares outstanding. At June 30th, 2021, Acuity adds at 60.4 million primary shares outstanding and 63.6 million fully diluted shares outstanding. In addition, insiders continue to own a substantial stake in the company. That concludes my prepared remarks. I'll now turn the presentation back over to Tal before Q&A. Thank you, Jonathan. We are so excited about Q2 results. The aggressive revenue growth, the Illumin growth, and the constant increase in profitability just shows the leverage of the model that as we're increasing more and more revenue and most of our expenses are fixed, we're able to bring in more profitability into the org. 
even more excited about the future. And you guessed it right, Illumin. Illumin is what I'm mostly excited about. And I love to see how Illumin is getting adopted out there. It's getting adopted by more and more brands that are really aligned with the way that they plan. Marketers plan a consumer journey. They always did. They just didn't have the tools to execute on it when it comes to programmatic. And the Lumen gives them that tool. And not only that it gives them that tool, it gives them the ability to see the types of insight they could never see before. And that is extremely valuable for, for them. So I'm happy to report that the Illumin pipeline for the second part of the year is extremely strong and we're very excited about how it looks. And I would like to thank again the Acuity family for delivering such an amazing quarter. And before we said that we were very excited about the NASDAQ, now that we're on the NASDAQ, we are very excited to go out and tell the story to more and more new shareholders in the rest of the year. And I would like to say a warm welcome and thank you to all our new shareholders from institutional shareholders to retail shareholders. I'd like to welcome you to the journey and the partnership of Acuity. We could never do any of the things we do without our investors and our partners. So thank you again. Jonathan and I would like to welcome everyone to our Q&A section. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Tal. Just a reminder to our analysts uh, to please use the Zoom raise hand function if you have a question. And please be mindful to turn your camera and mic on. Our first question comes from Laura Martin at Needham. Let's start with CTV. Very strong growth numbers on the CTV um, side of the business. Can you talk about, I, I think we were estimating last year it was about 5% of your business. As you think through the rest of 2021, how big do you think CTV could get? And what are its profit characteristics compared to the other channels of your ad revenue? Yeah, so let's start with the profit. Uh, I would say it's pretty aligned, uh, the margins that we make on CTV. Um, when we look at campaigns and it comes to Illumin, CTV is just a, just, just, just a part of it and it's an integral part of it. So when, when advertisers are running campaigns because we have Illumin, they can, they can run it together with their display and uh, with their other video campaigns or mobile or, or anything that's uh, programmatic and they can actually uh, see the, uh, how, how it affects their, uh, the bottom of the funnel campaigns as well. So, Therefore, it's, uh, it's more or less part of the same profitability uh, side of things. Um, I can you know, honestly say that uh, the, the growth rates are amazing and we can see that going to uh, the rest of the, of the year and years to come, but um, I don't really know the specific of, uh, percentage of uh, revenue on CTV and I, I really don't want to get. Okay, um, and my, my, my second question and my last question yeah. is on Illumin. So we have about, uh, last year round number 77 percent of your business was managed service and then illumin is really driving your self-service part of the business we've been estimating that your managed service has over 50 percent gross margins but your self-service meaning illumina is is um has about 30 percent gross margins and illumina is growing a lot faster than the overall business so can you talk about these these margin profiles you're reporting today are excellent do we end up with downward pressure on our margin profile as Illumin becomes a larger and larger part of the business, do you think? Yeah, I think in the long run, it's, uh, that's what we can expect. We can expect as the uh, self-serve Illumin numbers grow, the overall margin will uh, gradually go down, uh, but the numbers, the revenue numbers are gonna go up substantially, therefore the net revenue will go up. Um, and naturally, when running self-serve, you have less expenses in the back end, and uh, it should be more profitable as well. At the EBITDA line, it will be more profitable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you very much. Great numbers, you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Our next question comes from Darren at Roth. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, thanks for the questions hey. and uh, congrats on the quarter. So just on the uh, the 17 kind of as referred to, to tier one clients, can you talk about um, like revenue concentration uh, among Illumin there? And then my second one is the clients that have been on since the fourth quarter, how have this, how's the spend trended, um, you know, if any, and, and how does kind of relate to customers that are coming on uh, today it's said another way, like our new clients that are coming on that are tier one spending more with you than when they came on uh, in the fourth quarter. Thanks. 
So yeah, Darren, I would say the, uh, I mean, Jonathan could talk about concentration. I don't believe we have much, uh, but I would say that what we're looking, as you know, we launched it in Q4 and uh, our best guesses was that we will see the majority of revenue coming mid this year. So we were very surprised, but what we found there was really two types of clients, the clients that are using Illumin already and spending you know, a few hundred thousand on it per quarter or so. And, uh, and they gradually increasing their numbers and they're happy with, they're getting results. And they're the, the bigger clients that are, are spending also probably similar amounts, but it's more testing for them. But these types of clients are the one that takes a long time. The sales process takes a long time. So um, generally speaking, the retention rate is extremely high. Um, I think it's almost a hundred percent. Uh, and, uh, and the, uh, um, and, and the spend trend, uh, is looking very, very good. And we still expect the bigger deals to, uh, to close later on, you know, obviously we'll be, uh, uh, we will communicate when that happens. And Darren, with respect to the customer concentration <clears throat> of the 5.3 million in the quarter, the largest customer represented about 600,000 of that. Um, the next customer is about 350, 250, 200. So, there are many, many customers, uh, but the largest being about 13, 14%, nothing greater than that. Great, thank you. Our next question comes from Jacob at Lake Street. Just going back to Illumin, how has the Illumin spend been trending among your current install base um, between Q4, Q1, and Q2 now? So the current install base of Illumin or in general? Um, so your current customers, Okay, so from current customers, most of the revenue that's coming into Illumin is from brand new customers. So it's not taking customers from our existing business, moving in over to, uh, to Illumin. And from the, uh, the Illumin customers, um, it's, uh, it's been trending very well. As I said before, it's mostly uh, we have two groups, one that are spending very nicely and we're seeing increase in spend. Uh, over time, and then the other ones that are really taking a very close look at it, really excited about it, and um, and, and would like to uh, become a much bigger partnership in the future. Um, just switching over to kind of your onboarding process, how how are you guys able to ensure that um, customers coming online with this brand new platform are successful? That is actually a very very good question. And that is also one of the reasons we don't want to go too fast on it because when you launch a brand new platform that's never been tried before, you, you know, always want to make sure that it's perfect before you hit the gas uh, pedal a lot. So uh, we have, uh, in, a, in our sales process, we have sales engineers that um, are very close to the customers and to the sales process and very close to, uh, to the time when you need to launch a campaign. Uh, and we also uh, watch over what the customers are doing on a regular basis, making sure they're doing the right things. Remember, Illumin is very intuitive to begin with, but um, the success of the initial customers is so important to us that we have to, I would say, we want a babysit them to make sure that they're successful. So uh, we do that and, um, and we're finding great results. and. Uh, most of the times there's no issues. Sometimes there are issues and that's the beauty of it because we're very, very close to, uh, to the feedback back to the product and product comes in and makes changes and technology gets involved and make changes. Uh, you know, we are in you know, many iteration of Illumin already into it. And it's all because we're becoming more and more experts on it. A lot of the assumptions we made in the beginning to, uh, to build this platform were not necessarily optimal. And uh, so then it was all about getting that feedback, making changes, and it's all about you know, how to be more intuitive so it's easier to use, uh, how to make it faster even to set up campaigns. Remember on other DSPs, it takes hours to set up a campaign on Illumit, it will take a minute to somebody without any experience, uh, but we wanna make that even better. So, um, and, and performance, it's, I mean, Acuity has always been about performance, it's always been about driving ROI to our customers and Illumin drives even more ROI as a completely connected uh, consumer campaign. Hope that is really helpful. Yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you. Um, now with 
uh, 94, 93.4 uh, million on the balance sheet. What kind of um, M&A are you guys targeting? Is it going to expand your, your base business or are you going more towards um, expanding Illumin even faster? Yeah, so we're, we're not very happy about the half a percent that we're getting from the bank on it. I can tell you that much. So uh, obviously we're, uh, we're looking at M&A. We've been looking at a lot of companies lately. Uh, for me, there's, there's, uh, Illumin is, is definitely our focus for the future uh, and for the present, and that's where our focus is. And we have many elements, new elements that are on the plan and the pipeline for uh, on the product roadmap for Illumin. And it could be things that are not programmatic. So things like search and social and out of home signs and um, influence marketing, and there's a whole bunch of other ones that we want to uh, integrate into it. Now, we're specifically not experts in it, so we would love to uh, acquire companies that are experts in it. We can integrate a ready product right into Illumin and bring in the talent that can help us. And obviously, if it comes with, uh, with revenue and we can find some synergies and make it uh, the whole thing very profitable, that for me is the ideal uh, company that uh, we're looking for. Great. Um, last one here. Just going to the, the verticals, you know, travel, hospitality, and entertainment. Um, have you seen a recovery in those? Um, or are they kind of still uh, a little softer than you'd like? They're softer than we would like for sure, but we're starting to see the signs of recovery. Um, obviously, with all this, uh, you know, the pandemic is over. No, it's not over kind of situation. Um, it's really, really frustrating because we want to see all those uh, come back. Uh, but even the ones that are not fully back um, from, a, from a business perspective, they're starting to communicate with their consumers because they have to. And we're seeing uh, some ad dollars flowing there as well. Uh, so I think it's a pretty encouraging sign. And, you know, eventually uh, it's, it has to come back. Great. Congrats on the quarter. Thank you for answering the question. Thank you, Jacob. Our next question is going to come from Daniel Rosenberg at Paradigm. Good morning, Tal. Good morning, Jonathan. Uh, I had a quick question on the cost structure. So you guys have uh, you know, navigated COVID, uh, really focused on keeping costs contained and are benefiting. Um, just wondering how you think about uh, the opportunity ahead, whether it's worth kind of pausing the increases in profitability and really focusing on the growth opportunity or do you still uh, prioritize um, EBITDA expansion uh, as you see uh, the near-term business? Yeah, well, I say obviously we're prioritizing the growth of Illumin. That's that, that definitely our focus and we can do it uh, in a in number of different ways. I mean, there's M&A and there's, uh, uh, there's an investment in product and sales and marketing. And um, we're doing our strategic planning, and I think it's going to be a combination of uh, of, of of all those things. Um, you know, we we are going to stay profitable. There's no doubt about that. But uh, you know, maybe we will give up some of the profits in order to uh, to move faster. Uh, it's all in the planning right now uh, over the next few weeks, and uh, and uh, you know, once we have a better idea of uh, of how to proceed. Uh, we will uh, we'll be able to communicate it, but you know, for me, it's, uh, it's an investment on both sides. Okay, great. And then in terms of the teaching initiatives that you put out there for Illumin, I know you invested in creating some programs. I was wondering if you could just share uh, any do you see uh, Illumin users starting to become more self-sufficient? Uh, are you still, or, or are they you know, really uh, enjoying having you by their side in designing campaigns on the Illumin platform? It's a, it's a mix of both. I mean, obviously the education program that, uh, that we're running is, is, is very good and it's really creating customers for the future. It's, uh, it's more the juniors that are taking it, I would say, and, and the AIB and all of that and, uh, and creating, and it's not only juniors, but obviously it's, I think it's creating our customers of the future. Um, and it's also educating the market about um, advertising automation that connects the consumer journey and all that. So uh, we're happy with that. We're happy with the leads we're getting from us and the amount of customers and signups that we're getting from it and the conversations we're having. 
Um, and, uh, and on the other side, um, it's also, like I said before, we don't really want to go too fast with the lumen because we're learning from it all the time. So um, it, 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 it's definitely a mix, but over the next few quarters, there's gonna be way, way more uh, self-serve uh, than managed. And uh, we will definitely encourage uh, customers to do it more on the self-serve side. Okay, great. Thanks for taking my questions. I'll pass the line. Thank you, Daniel. Our next question comes from Kevin Kristorotne at Desjardins. Hey, Kevin, how are you? There you are. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you. Glad, hey, I, glad I made it. Morning. Hey, really good, really good results, guys. I have a question for you, following up on previous questions on the on the gross the gross uh, margin, the net revenue, whatever you want to call it. Um, Tal, you mentioned over time, you know, there'll be a skewing back down. You know, it'll move, you know, closer and closer below the 50% mark, I guess, as you get more of the uh, the self serve business in. But even if you think about your self serve take rate, it's sort of, I think you've indicated 30, 35%. That, that is quite high relative to what you see in the industry. And I know we've talked in, in the past on the pricing power that you have there, just given the, you know, the strong ROI that you deliver. As, as you're going to market with Illumin and you're, and you're getting in front of larger, you know, clients, more global clients that might be giving, you know, having more spend, they might be used to other DSPs that have lower take rates. What, how do you think about that, that longer term? You know, in the past you have, you have sort of given up a little bit of margins to win bigger deals. Just wondering longer term, how do you think about take rate? I think we still have the luxury of getting more take rates because we have something, two, two things that are very unique. Number one is the Lumen. Again, this is a platform that nobody else out there has. It's very unique and, um, and it's very desirable. At the end of the day, this is what marketers dream of. This is what they plan. They always plan consumer journey and they didn't have a way of activating it up to now. And now they have that system. So we do have the luxury of that. Couple that with a with an algorithm that delivers a better ROI, and it, ultimately, what customers care about is their ROI. And if they spend a little bit more on margin to us, but make more ROI when they spend less with other players, then that's a better deal for them. So I do believe we will have the luxury of taking uh, our take rate to be higher. Um, look, when you when you think about deals that are very big in the tens of millions of dollars a year uh, revenue. Uh, we will probably be more flexible, but the net revenue that we're going to have on our system is going to be much higher, and uh, therefore our profits uh, will show that as well. So I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a win-win. That, that's great to hear. Thanks for that. Um, uh, as others have mentioned on the call, travel and entertainment is still you know, a little light, but you did see signs of recovery. I think the results you put in Q2 were quite strong in light of that, even though you've got a pause on, on the business there. Can you remind us? you know, historically what that business, you know, represents in a Q2 and a Q3 in terms of the percentage of, uh, of revenue? Yeah, historically, travel entertainment and things related to travel entertainment were about 20, 25%. Um, as you mentioned, we've been able to get that revenue back from other verticals. Tell mentioned auto has been something we've invested in over the last 12 months. That has performed extraordinarily well. Our, our team focused on auto is really hitting it out of the park. But we are seeing some small increases in certain travel and entertainment, and we do see that coming back. Um, as Tom mentioned, obviously, airlines are up and running again and spending marketing dollars, and we hope that that will continue. But you'll also see hotels, cruise ships, and other ways of travel spending money. And, you know, we're, we're not expecting that to be a big part in our internal budget but if it does it will definitely allow us to outperform great um last one for me just on profits again a very impressive uh, ebitda profile uh, you mentioned that uh, you know the focus is on Illumin. can you can you talk about any sort of spending plans internationally uh, when you think about you know the ad market and even ctv there's a lot of opportunity in, in international markets. You've got a presence in Europe through a prior acquisition. Can you talk about, you know, maybe the resources that you've got internationally and any thoughts on using some of that, uh, you know, that cash on the balance sheet to, to increase uh, your, your presence in international markets? Thinking that in the context of, as again, with Illumin, you, you presumably are targeting, targeting a larger brands that are global in nature that might want to run global uh, campaigns. Thanks. 
So from a, from a technical perspective, we are international with the exception of Asia. We can't run any campaigns there just because it's a matter of having data centers, uh, which by the way, it's not that difficult to do if we decide to do it. Uh, for me, that area is more um, tough from a, from a sales and marketing perspective. But the rest of the world, technically we're there and we can run. So um, international expansion is something that's part of the, uh, uh, it's on the table from the strategic plan point of view and we will be uh, exploring it. I am personally a fan of it and I do believe the rest of Europe is something we should pay attention to um, and some other areas of the world that are up and coming as well. So, um, and we can do that from an M&A uh, perspective or from a hiring perspective as well. Uh, and all that is part of the strategic planning for the future. Great. Thanks, and uh, congrats again, guys. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Jonathan, Tal, it looks like we have no more questions at this point. I'll hand it off to you two to close up shop here. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining our call. Um, as I said before, we truly value all the, uh, the investors uh, that are joining the, the journey um, all the time and like from a while ago and but recently as well and um you all matter and we couldn't have done it uh, without you i would like to share one quick story that i heard from the sales team when it comes to Illumin. and there was a conversation there was a there, there was a sales uh, meeting with uh, with a major agency and a major executive that originally did not even feel that he want to take that meeting uh, in the middle of that meeting he was so excited about it and he shared with everyone that everyone from the beginning of times of programmatic marketing have been talking about the consumer journey. And we are the only one that actually provided the tools and activation, meaning that you can plan your campaign and activate it from our system. And that is something that he claims is huge, which obviously we think so as well. So that is the feedback we're getting from the street from very, very large advertisers. And that's truly excited to be part of Acuity today as we're getting more and more people to adopt Lumen. So thank you everyone uh, on the call today and uh, we'll see you on the next uh, quarterly call.